What I'm trying to work out, remember, is the area of this sector. I know the area of the circle. That's the easy bit. This part takes a little more work. Okay. So what I want to do is say, well, the area of the sector, right? The area of the sector is clearly related to the length of the arc. Okay? Like, do you see, the longer the arc becomes, if the arc went all the way around, it would make the whole circle. And as I make that arc shorter, the area would also get smaller. Do you agree with that? Okay, so these guys are related to each other. I'm going to connect those to two other values that I, I need to work out with you. Okay? The area of the, sorry, the length of the arc over here. Right? It's part of the big circumference. Remember I told you there are two circumferences? So I'm going to talk about a big one and a little one. That's this, all the way around. So as if I had a whole circle there. Hmm. Look carefully at the diagram. What is this big circumference? Well, look at it. The angle is going to be 360 degrees all the way around. But if I want the length, it's going to be 2 times mm -hmm. pi times this radius in here. Right? I know it's not called r, but that's because I already used that letter. Okay? So it's going to be this circumference all the way around. Right? Uh, I suppose I should call that big circumference. Now if I compare these two, if I went all the way around and got the whole circumference, this sector, do you remember I said, it wouldn't just be like part of a circle, it would be the whole circle. Do you agree with that? Hmm. So have a look here. Area and area, length and length. Because we're talking about the same shapes, when you compare these, they're equal. Okay? We're comparing part of the area, the whole area, part of the circumference, the whole circumference. Okay, I'm ready to fill this in. The area of sector, I don't know. That's the whole thing I'm trying to work out. So I'm just going to write area of sector. But I can work out every other thing here. One, two, three. Okay. Uh, you already told me the length of the arc. Do you see it on the board? What's the length of the arc? It's 2 pi r, right? Hmm. What about the circumference, including this bit that's not here? It's got, it's still a circle, but it's a different radius. What's the radius of this circle over here? It's L, isn't it? Do, do you see it right there? That's the, the radius of this circle over here. Not this one, it's this one. So it's 2 pi times the radius. It's just a different label. Okay. You following with me so far? Now I want to look at the whole circle, that big one over here. What's the area of the big circle? It's going to be, now be careful, it's pi times the radius squared, but my radius over here is L, so therefore I'm going to write pi L squared. Now I'm almost there, I'm so very close. Let's simplify a little bit. Have a look at the right hand side. Uh, that fraction I can write in a neater way, right? What can I cancel on the top and the bottom? 2 pi. It's up there, it's up there, it's gone. So I'm just going to put circles around them to indicate I'm going to cancel them in a second. Now, what, what am I trying to find? What's the thing I'm trying to solve for? Sector. It's the sector, right? So you see it's there. I don't want this stuff hanging around the bottom. I kind of want to get rid of it over here. So I'm going to multiply both sides by pi L squared. I'll write that here. Multiply by pi L squared. Multiply by pi L squared. <coughs> Do you see what's going to happen? Have a look on the left-hand side. What's the, what's the benefit of multiplying by pi L squared? The, the benefit is I get the area of the sector by itself. Because look, this cancels with this. So I've just got the area of the sector. As soon as I work out what's happening over here on the right. Have a look. I can cancel some more stuff, right? What can I cancel? There's an L on the bottom. There's, um, there's two of them up the top. Okay. So if this one goes, how many L's am I left with on the one. numerator? One. Just one. So that, that disappears. Now have a look. Okay, we've done all the hard work. On the left hand side, all I get left with is the area of a sector. That's all that's left on the left hand side. Everything else is cancelled. 
Have a look on the right hand side. What's left on the denominator? I think I've cancelled everything on the denominator, haven't I? Do you remember that 2 pi went with that 2 pi? What about this guy? It's gone because of one of these L's, right? So there is nothing left on the denominator. Look at the numerator. I see an R and a pi and a single L. Do you agree with me? Is that, yeah, you follow me? So I'm going to write it like this. Because we usually put pi's out the front. It's just need to descend. So we're done. That was it. I know that was a lot of work, but the whole point of being able to create that in front of you so you could see where all those lengths come from, now I can actually say what the surface area is. We know what the base is. All you need to do is add it to the curvy part, and there is the surface area of a cone. Pi r squared plus pi r l. Uh, it reminds me a, bit of a, a little bit of the cylinder. Do you remember the cylinder? From memory, I think the cylinder was this. Put it in. I think that was the cylinder. Do you remember that? Uh, this is the top and the bottom, and this is the round bit. Do you remember that? The, the curvy part that goes around. It's the same here. It's the same here. There's no top and bottom though. There's just a bottom, and then here's the round bit. I thought for sectors, if they give you like the degrees, like it's 180 degrees. Correct. So if you know what this angle is here. That's another way to work out the area of a sector. However, you generally don't get given that. You generally get given lengths rather than an angle. Okay? All right. Now, I know that was challenging, which is why the next bit, I'm not going to expect you to do all the legwork for it. Um, the heading says surface area of cones and spheres, right? So I'm just going to give you this result. I'm not going to ask you to prove it because it's actually super hard. But mm, uh, unfortunately, I got a bit beat up since the last time I made it. But this is a roughly spherical object, okay? Now, if you look really closely, I'll stop moving it now. Do you see what the net is made of? Can, can you actually see what it's made of? Okay, so what I did was, and you may want to just draw one of these. What it's made of is something called a gore. This shape is called a gore. It's kind of like a sliver. And I took a whole bunch of them. I curved them around as best as I could. And I ended up with this, okay? I know it's not beautiful, but it works, okay? Now here's the lovely thing about this sphere. If you were to take all of the gauze and cut them all out, what you would find is that the surface area of a sphere is equal to, okay, have a look. A sphere just has a radius, right? Like a radius like that from the middle out to any of the parts on the surface. Okay? If you take that radius and you just pop it into this, 4 pi r squared, that's it. It's remarkably simple. Now, I don't expect you to completely take my word for it. So I had a bit of time one day and I did exactly that. If you cut out all of these gores, right? I think I had nine of them in the end, okay? And you reassemble them, you get one, two, three, four circles. And every circle has an area of pi r squared, so four pi r squared, okay? Now, like I said, this is quite time consuming, so that's why I'm not asking you to do it right now. But that result will help you as you work through the remainder of the exercise that I have assigned, okay? So, just to tie it up in a neat bow, surface area of a cone, pi r squared plus pi r l. Surface area of a sphere, full pi r squared, full stop, that's it. Okay.